Androgen deprivation therapy refers to treatments that are used for locally advanced or metastatic prostate cancer. These treatments deprive the body of testosterone, a hormone that is needed for the prostate cancer cells to grow. two main forms of androgen deprivation therapy. Medical treatments, which are reversible, and surgical treatments, that is removal of the testes, that are not reversible. Well, these treatments can have quite significant implications for men and how they feel generally in their life. These treatments are very effective in treating and managing the prostate cancer, but they can have a number of side effects. Most immediately, men can be aware of having sweats and flushes. These treatments can affect their sense of well-being, their mood, their energy levels. They often find that they're more tired and they're not able to do the physical activities they may have been able to do. They can also affect mood and men can find that they feel that they're quite down. In the longer term, we're concerned that these treatments may also have a negative effect on the bones and increase the risk of osteoporosis. And as men stay on treatments for a longer period of time, it may increase their risk of developing diabetes and concerningly, even perhaps heart disease can affect the sex life quite drastically. Some men will find that their sex drive or their libido is really reduced very significantly. And of course, other things that affect this are they're, they're feeling tired and if their mood is a little low, low as well. They may also have had problems with their ability to get an erection or erectile dysfunction. Now this may relate perhaps to the side effects of previous treatments for the prostate cancer, that is surgery or radiotherapy, but indeed the lock the loss of testosterone will also reduce their ability to get an erection. Men will respond differently. Some men do find that they actually are able to tolerate the treatments quite well. Other men find that perhaps they're more susceptible to the side effects. It does in part reflect a man's general health and also their levels of physical activity and other medical problems. For example, those men who can keep themselves fit and active during the treatment, and even though they may be aware of these side effects, have got strategies to deal with them, such as having regular exercise, a healthy diet and managing their weight, may find that they're able to tolerate the side effects a lot better. It also becomes clear too that the side effects do tend to get a little bit better over time. And indeed, there are specific treatments that we can use to address some of the side effects. For example, there are some medications that can be used to help the sweats and the flushes. Testosterone levels can drop as men get older, so the, the amount of testosterone that a man starts with may be reflected by their age. However, the drop that we're talking about with these treatments is a very sudden, very profound drop. So really, men will be aware of this re regardless of their age. How these treatments are used are very much dependent upon how the urologist will treat each individual man based on what his prostate cancer looks like and what his other uh, health conditions may be. Some men may only receive one or two injections and will find that their PSA or the level of the marker that's used to um, monitor their prostate cancer is very low and they may not have ongoing therapy. Some men will have intermittent androgen deprivation therapy, that is they'll have some time on treatment and some time off treatment, but some men will need to stay on it in the longer term. For some men who have perhaps only one or several injections and then androgen deprivation therapy is withdrawn, it may be that testosterone levels don't come back to their normal range again and on the odd occasion it may be appropriate for a man, ironically, to actually be considered to have some testosterone therapy. These are very complex decisions and are made by the patient in conjunction with their advice from their medical team, that is the urologist, perhaps the endocrinologist involved, the radiation oncologist and their GP.